The Pentagon just approached SpaceX with an unusual request. They want to buy Starship vehicles outright for elevated risk missions. Not rent them, not lease launch services, actually own the rockets. This breaks decades of tradition where the DoD simply buys launches, never the vehicles themselves. So what missions are so sensitive, so dangerous, that the military needs to own the asset? And here's what makes this even stranger. SpaceX's Gary Henry confirmed these aren't cargo transport missions. Moving supplies doesn't qualify as elevated risk. The real target is something happening right now in geostationary orbit, where Russian and Chinese satellites are playing a dangerous game of cat and mouse with U.S. spacecraft. But what exactly can a 200-ton starship do up there that smaller vehicles can't? Let's find out on today's episode of New Space Review. The trail starts with a document that looked routine on the surface. December 29th, the U.S. Space Force released a request for information about Space Launch Complex 14 at Vandenberg. Just another launch site inquiry, right? Wrong. Read between the lines and something doesn't add up. The RFI specifically asks for super-heavy rockets capable of hauling more than 50,000 kilograms to orbit, with bonus points for vehicles that can do point-to-point -point transportation or bring payloads back to Earth. They want a financially stable company with a brand new launch vehicle, not one already operating at Vandenberg. Most telling? They need operational capability within five years. Only one rocket in existence checks every single box. So why is the Space Force being so specific about capabilities that only Starship possesses? Look at the timing and you'll see the bigger picture. Just months earlier, in 2025, SpaceX received Department of the Air Force approval to overhaul SLC-37 at Cape Canaveral installing two Starship launch towers. Now, Vandenberg is opening its doors to the same vehicle. This isn't coincidence. The military is systematically building Starship infrastructure on both coasts, creating launch options for polar orbits from Vandenberg and equatorial trajectories from Florida. But cargo transport doesn't require this level of geographic redundancy. Something else is going on. For years, SpaceX has publicly discussed using Starship for rapid military cargo delivery. The pitch sounds compelling. Load 100 tons of equipment in Texas, launch it halfway around the world, and land at a remote military base in under an hour. Elon Musk even suggested adding extra Raptor engines so Starship could skip along the upper atmosphere without needing the super-heavy booster, reaching extreme speeds over intercontinental distances. SpaceX has talked about floating spaceports, pre-positioned orbital depots, and cargo capsules that could deorbit anywhere on Earth within minutes. The technology sounds revolutionary. There's just one problem with this narrative. It's a misdirection. Gary Henry dropped the real bombshell in 2024. SpaceX's senior advisor for National Security Space Solutions revealed that DoD conversations weren't about cargo transport at all. We've had conversations, Henry stated, explaining the military wanted to buy Starship vehicles for elevated risk missions involving dangerous use cases. He made this crystal clear. This goes beyond rocket-based cargo transport. Moving boxes of supplies doesn't qualify as elevated risk. FedEx does that every day without buying their own planes. So what operations are so sensitive that the Pentagon needs to own the rockets outright? 
The answer is unfolding 22,000 miles above Earth in geostationary orbit. This is where the most valuable military and intelligence satellites operate, hanging motionless over specific regions, providing communications, missile warning and surveillance. It's also become the most contested battlefield in space. Russian and Chinese satellites have been caught performing what military analysts call rendezvous and proximity operations. These aren't accidental encounters. Satellites deliberately maneuver close to U.S. spacecraft, sometimes within meters, photographing their capabilities, intercepting signals, or simply sending a message. We can reach your assets any time we want. Now, the U.S. Air Force already has a response vehicle, the X-37B spaceplane. This autonomous craft can rendezvous with objects in orbit, deploy small satellites, and conduct surveillance missions for years at a time. It's impressive technology, but its payload bay maxes out at around 2,400 pounds, even with an added service module. Against the kind of threats emerging in GEO, that's bringing a pocket knife to a gunfight. What happens when you need to capture, disable, or repair a satellite weighing several tons? What if hostile spacecraft start operating in swarms? The X-37B's size becomes its fatal limitation. That's where Starship changes everything. With 1,000 cubic meters of internal volume and future payload capacity hitting 200 tons with orbital refueling, it's not just bigger, it's a different category of capability entirely. SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell spelled out one application. Let's say you have a satellite and something goes wrong. Starship can open its payload bay, bring the satellite back in, pressurize it, work on it, and redeploy it. But she added something more revealing. If you're getting interference in the geo belt, maybe you want to go up there and take a look at your neighbors. That last sentence carries enormous implications. We're not talking about passive observation anymore. With 200 tons of mission-specific hardware, a military starship could carry sophisticated jamming equipment, robotic arms for satellite manipulation, or classified systems we can only speculate about. The 8.5-meter diameter payload bay is large enough to swallow most satellites whole, solar panels and all. Can't fit it inside? Deploy an expandable habitat module like Sierra Space's LIFE system and conduct external repairs with military personnel who have proper security clearances for classified spacecraft. Think about what this really means. The DoD wouldn't just be conducting individual missions, they'd be operating what amounts to a mobile space station in GEO, able to respond to threats, service friendly satellites, and counter hostile operations in real time. China's space program has been racing to develop similar capabilities, but they're still launching stations to low Earth orbit. A U.S. military presence in geostationary orbit would represent a strategic advantage measured in years, possibly decades. The financial signals support this theory, too. SpaceX's valuation recently hit $350 billion, with discussions of raising tens of billions more through a potential IPO. That kind of capital influx doesn't happen just to transport cargo. Investors are betting on Starship becoming essential infrastructure for military space operations. The Space Force's insistence on financially stable providers isn't about avoiding bankruptcy. It's about ensuring SpaceX can sustain a classified military Starship program parallel to their commercial operations, potentially involving entirely separate production lines, ground facilities, and operational protocols. What makes this even more intriguing, the military wants these capabilities operational within five years. That's an aggressive timeline that suggests urgency. 
Intelligence assessments must indicate the GEO threat environment is deteriorating faster than publicly acknowledged. Chinese and Russian satellite inspector capabilities are advancing. Anti-satellite weapons are proliferating. The window for establishing U.S. dominance in orbital operations may be closing. Starship represents the last opportunity to secure overwhelming advantage before adversaries catch up technologically. The Vandenberg site selection reinforces this analysis. SLC-14 sits at the southernmost point of the base, ideal for polar orbit insertions. From there, Starship could reach any inclination, accessing satellites in sun-synchronous orbits where most reconnaissance spacecraft operate. Combined with Florida's equatorial launch options, the U.S. military would have complete orbital access for Starship missions. This isn't about redundancy for cargo flights. It's about ensuring mission capability, regardless of which satellites need attention or which threats need to be countered. Consider what this means for space warfare doctrine. Currently, the only options for countering hostile spacecraft are diplomatic protests, electronic warfare, or kinetic kill vehicles that create debris fields endangering everything in that orbit. Starship introduces a fourth option, physical intervention without destruction. A satellite acting suspiciously near U.S. assets could be captured, inspected, and either disabled temporarily or permanently removed from orbit. No debris, no international incident over weapons use, just a spacecraft that mysteriously stopped working after a close encounter with an American vehicle. The implications extend beyond pure military applications, too. Commercial satellite operators lose billions when spacecraft fail prematurely. If Starship can retrieve, repair, and redeploy satellites, it creates an entirely new service industry in space. But military missions would take priority, and that raises questions about technology transfer. Would SpaceX maintain separate crews for military versus commercial operations? Would classified military starships have different capabilities than public versions? The answers likely involve security clearances, compartmentalization, and operational separation that makes the Space Shuttle program's classified missions look transparent by comparison. So here's what the Pentagon really wants from Starship. Not a cargo truck, but a game-changer in satellite warfare. The ability to capture, repair, or disable spacecraft in GEO without creating debris or starting World War III. While China announces their space station achievements, the U.S. is quietly building something far more strategic. Mobile military capability 22,000 miles up, where the most valuable assets orbit. This isn't science fiction. It's happening now, with Vandenberg and Cape Canaveral both getting Starship infrastructure for a reason that has nothing to do with moving boxes. If you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button and subscribe to New Space Review for more deep dives into what's really happening in the space industry. Drop a comment. Do you think military starships will change the balance of power in orbit? Your perspective matters to this community. Thanks for watching and being part of this journey as we uncover the stories behind the headlines. Speaking of game changers, click that end screen to watch how SpaceX revealed how to build Moonbase without NASA's $200 billion gateway. You won't believe what they're planning instead.